Okay, um, hello there. I'm Oliver Caldwell, and I am the author of Conjure and Aniseed and a few other plugins. And I thought I'd just knock together a little video that kind of demonstrates how I interact with Conjure and how I uh, interact with the code that I work on. Um, because everyone seems to have their different approaches to um, their workflow and how they use this tool. Um, and a discussion in the Discord uh, kind of turned into me explaining how I do things. And I thought it'd be worth making a little video to demonstrate that and also adding something to Conjure live in this. So um, first of all, let's do a quick demo of how I would do some closure. Um, so let's open up the sandbox file. This is one that I use to like uh, just check. I have sandbox files for every every module or every client. So in all of these, I have different sandbox files and they're just examples of syntax. So let's go into one of these, start up a REPL. So this uh, is using uh, Vim Jackin. So we'll start up a REPL here. I use this when I'm trying to do like a quick one-off thing. So as soon as this is up, this is written the MREPL port. I can connect with comma CF because my local leader is comma and you can see that we connected the first connection um, you see that time out there was it trying to ask hey what what type of REPL are you uh, what type of closure and REPL session are you and uh, it timed out I put a, I put a time out on that I need to probably extend that a bit um, and then it eventually got it uh, and we know what kind of um, session we're in so let's close the log I can close this because it's still running in the background uh, in a in a terminal under NeoVim now, uh, and I have a connection. I can evaluate things, which is great. So we can see everything here. Um, and when I'm going to work in these buffers, like if I wanted to uh, modify add, so to change how it works, let's implement it recursively. Um, I don't have the REPL up here. I don't work here. I don't like do ns dev sandbox. Like I don't drop myself into this this environment. I work inside the buffer itself. So if I want to modify add, I'll try it here. I'll do like two and five. Cool, gives me seven. Nice. Uh, another thing I can do is uh, write a do expression. And now I can modify add and do comma er and it'll evaluate this whole root expression, which will do the evaluation and the call. So that's that's kind of a neat little trick there. So in here we could say like, uh, how do we implement add? We could actually do um, loop. Well, we've already got an explicit uh, implicit loop. Uh, recur. Oh, we need an if statement. If uh, I don't know, b is zero, uh, then return a. Um, yeah, this isn't a very good add, but it might work. Uh, otherwise, we'll do a recur inc a deck b. Uh, let's see what happens. We get seven. Cool. If I did comma er again, you can see in the top right there, I evaluated the root form once again, um, and it, it gives us the result we expect. So that's a way that we can like iterate on on these code blocks. So I can undo that now. Another thing you could do is uh, say like. Um, hang on, let me grab this uh, code again. Uh, you could grab the inner part of the form and you could come down somewhere else and you could paste that and you could replace parts of this. So we could do loop A uh, 2 and B 5 uh, and what do we do? B there and do that. And now we have kind of a standalone extracted piece of this code where I've, I've replaced all the uh, variables um, and I can modify this and I can work on it until I'm happy with it. Maybe I want to change it. Maybe I want to change the body back to plus AB. Uh, I'd have to let that be, you know, and then come in here and replace it again. And now we're back to where we started. So you can kind of extract parts of your function um, and move it elsewhere. Uh, let's just Oh, that's not working. Um, ah. Huh, odd. I think there's something wrong with my um, S expression editing. Okay, so we'll put that back to how it was. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a couple of ways that you can do that. You can extract things and you can wrap stuff and do 
blocks. Another thing you could do um, if you've got a comment block, you can evaluate these things in here, right? Like it's commented, but we can still evaluate it. We can actually wrap multiple things in do blocks inside comments, and then you can say, okay, evaluate this whole thing in a comment. So you can have kind of multiple uh, areas in a comment block that do different things, which is quite useful for side effects or like developer tooling, which I have down the bottom here. I've got a bunch of stuff that is all commented out, um, but I, I evaluate just to check things. So if I if I do this, I get a nice little progress bar. It's just a way that I test that the, the log kind of prints live as you would expect. Um, yeah, so that's quite neat. So the other way that I would work on things is, uh, let's go to another project. So some side project and Docker Compose up. So this one is a little different because I start up a Docker Compose. Uh, so I don't start the REPL directly inside my editor. Um, let's go to the Athena repo. Um, so I have my Docker Compose running here. There's a, uh, it opens a port up and the NREPL port is over here. Um, and then all I have to do is open main.coj. We are now connected automatically to that Docker uh, file. Um, what's neat is that I can do comma EF and you see how it gave it a relative path because the Docker instance is using a different um, a different file system. I'm mounting my file system into this Docker container. So what I'm actually doing is configuring Conjure through npm local fennel here. Uh, you could do this through anything you want, um, but I'm configuring it to say, right, I want you to do relative files. So to, instead of passing absolute files everywhere, make files relative to this directory, which happens to be my current working directory. Um, and then I'm also saying, if you hit, if something tries to access root m2 from inside the Docker container, replace it with my home path, uh, my home m2. Uh, what that allows me to do is go to definition. And this has taken me to my local M2 repository, even though the path that was uh, sent out by CIDR was in the root of the Docker container. So it's kind of like I'm translating things from root Docker stuff to my outer context. So it allows me to seamlessly interact with stuff within Docker containers. Um, and I do this at work where we have multiple containers and I have multiple configurations per directory. So as I change directory in a, in a mono repo, um, it will connect to the correct Docker instance, the correct container, and map the paths around automatically, uh, which is pretty useful. Uh, and the only other config here uh, that is worth thinking about is setting a refresh before and after. So when I use my closure tools namespace refresh uh, mapping, which is built into Conjure, it will call mount core uh, stop and start in that order. So if I go into main, we can actually see in, in here, in my log, Athena is connected to Discord because it's a Discord bot. doesn't do anything yet, but it's connected, telling me the MREP is up and all that sort of thing. Uh, if I do uh, comma RR, that refreshed the namespaces and restarted everything. And if I go in my log again, you can see that it disconnected, it shut itself down, reconnected, shards came up, and it printed the uh, information about my Discord server. Um, so it's all kind of integrated. I can, my conjure is integrated to my Docker and those paths and uh, the component system. Um, and this is all closure specific, but the actual like, the path modifying part is not, that works with every conjure client. Um, and the way that I extract forms and modify them, wrap them in comments and iterate inside the buffer itself, that's like every client supports that as well. Uh, and to kind of demonstrate that a bit more, let's let's kill this. Goodbye. Okay, that's dead. Um, let's go back to Conjure. And let's modify Conjure itself. So, uh, what file do I want? I want... Uh, this one. So, let's do this to-do. Like, Aniseed, um, the Aniseed support in Conjure because it's a kind of symbiotic relationship. Conjure is built with Aniseed, and I can modify Aniseed with Conjure, which is a fun loop, a snake eating its own tail. 
it has completion. So uh, as you can see up here, I have some require statements. Uh, I can do like uh, a dot, and we can see we get all the functions completed from Aniseed's core library. The annoying thing is I can't like tell what type these are. Like I can't tell if they're functions or not, right? And I would kind of like to know that. Like if I do io dot, this is now all of the io library stuff from Lua. But I don't know what these things are. I can assume they're functions, but they might not be. So it'd be nice if we knew the type. So uh, how do we do that? Well, we've got this function here that I refactored in. We can ignore the, the guts down here. This is scary. We have a function here which is given a value uh, and we check, or is it truthy? Um, actually, we don't need that. We can just do this. Yes. So let's refactor that. Cool. Evaluate that. A dot. Yep, still working. This is, every time I complete here, it's calling this function several times. So as I modify it and as I evaluate it, we're changing the behavior. So I could actually change the completion to something else, but then it wouldn't show up in the completion list because it wouldn't match. Uh, but we can set the kind. So if, like we set it to, I don't know, X. Okay, evaluate that. And A dot. Oh, not working yet. A dot, there we go. So everything has an X next to it. That's its uh, kind, its type. So we want that to be like F for functions, T for tables, B for booleans, uh, and that's fairly easy to do. So what we can actually do is uh, type of V, evaluate that. Okay, now everything's functions, and you can see this one here is a cached value, I think. Uh, so you wouldn't normally get that, but it's my, um, my completion tooling is caching things for some reason. So we have some function things here, and strings, and like these are all nice and distinct. But what's expected is these to be a single character uppercase. That's the usual convention. So let's evaluate. Let's iterate on that. So to iterate on that, let's extract this. Do this. OK, now we've got an example. We could do type foo to get string. And I want to get the first character. So let's do string dot sub, which is a function. Funnily enough, it's, it's, we're relying on this code to develop this code. Uh, and let's give it a 1-1. One, one. That's the first character. And then wrap it again. Let's do string dot upper. Now it's a capital S. And now what we can do is take this form, put that back in, replace this element with the value. Uh, these two, whoops, these two we are not using, but I'll leave them nil just because they're documentation. Then we know that there are extra things we can provide here uh, to Vim's completion and evaluate this, and now it works. Look, we have every every type listed. So when I do io dot, oh, what's u? I wonder what u is. Maybe we should put the whole thing in here. I mean, we can try this out for now, right? We can change this. User data. Ah, well, maybe I should do the full string. You know what, after some experimentation, I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave that in. I'm just going to do the whole type. So, yeah, now we do a dot that and we get a bunch of different things. Could do some abbreviations or something, but meh. I think that's useful. I think it's good to uh, show people that sort of thing, uh, especially in lower land where people may be less familiar with the types that are going around. Um, so that's all I really wanted to show you. I'm going to commit this and push it and deploy it, and we'll have a new... Uh, a new version of Conjure out. Um, I hope this has been interesting and shown you a little bit of how I work, where I I work on the code itself. I've used this area sparingly. This is purely just a history and also a way to um, a way to experiment. So experiment on previous values, but it's not my primary interaction. My primary interaction is the buffer itself. Um, because I'm close to the code, I can see it, it's all co-located. And I believe that's how, that's the best way for us to interact with our code, is to be looking at the code and modifying it live while asking it questions. I don't like having to swap between two different contexts. Um, but there's different uses here. You might want to use this for something unrelated to the buffer entirely. Um, and when you want to experiment with something, you don't have to do it in a generic place. You can just pick a buffer if you want to run some code, pick one buffer or namespace or whatever that is kind of close to what you're interested in, even if you're going to throw away this code, it's just scratch code, 
um, that you would have previously used a regular REPL for, and just go in and modify that buffer, and when you're done, delete the code. Um, it gives you a nice place, a familiar environment with tools and functions and things already imported for you to work in, um, and you've got Git, right? You can undo. So I feel like you shouldn't be opening up a fresh, empty environment just to experiment with something. Pick something that's already kitted out with all the tools you normally need. If you want to do something with a web request enclosure, pick a namespace in your project that already does HTTP requests and just rely on those functions to test something out and then throw it away when you're done. It's a, a better, richer experience than a plain blank REPL where you have to type out everything again from the start. We might as well use the code we've already written. So I hope that's been interesting. I'll wrap up now. Um, and let me know if you want more of this sort of thing. Feel free to ask some questions, jump into the Discord and chat about it. Uh, and feel free to share how you work with it. Like if this is, if you work very differently with Conjure to how I do, um, I would still love to hear about it. Like just let me know. Um, I'll be fascinated. Uh, yeah, cool. I hope you have a great weekend. If you're watching this on the weekend I released it, um, have a good day. See you soon.